Welcome back folks to the VIA pinstriping page. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching. Uh, today we're just going to do a design on this. Uh, it's like a chalkboard paper that you can get from Walmart. Um, I believe it's like a big sticker so you could stick it anywhere you want. But it has kind of a chalkboard-ish uh, surface to it. We have the Excalibur, I believe. Um... Mr. J's Excalibur brush. I believe this might be a size 00. zero. You can barely see it faintly there. Um, and some alpha enamel paint. <clears throat> so this is a design that I kind of came up with at work, just drawing stuff out. So it is something that is pre-thought out a little bit. And I thought I'd give it a shot. So, we're going to start off with a line that goes outward. And another one that's going to mimic that one. This will be a symmetrical design. So both sides are going to try to match each other. Hopefully I don't run out of space here on what I want to do. Uh, we'll see. This paper isn't exactly uh, even on both sides. It's just something that I kind of tore up real fast for this video. As you can see, actually, this side goes further out, but it'll be all right. We'll make it work. I think you'll be able to get the idea either way. I did use this brush on my previous video. And again, I'm not very uh, skilled with a sword striper, but this one did feel pretty intuitive, so I thought I'd go ahead and give it a shot again. I want to start doing more videos with sword brushes. Now, I believe this goes out. The thing about this particular brush, I believe it was developed to give you the uh, feel of an uh, quote unquote already trimmed brush. So they take out some hair off the belly and make the hairs a little shorter. Which is what some folks do uh, when they trim the brush. Let's see here. Now the thing with... having an, a design already kind of made is understanding what part you should lay down first. In a lot of my previous videos, um, uh, the 15 minute videos and such, I would just kind of come off, come off the top of my head with something. But on this one, I wanted to make it a little bit nicer. Something with a little bit more of a shape that I like. The idea with doing freehand stuff uh, is to come up with new ideas. And then if, if you get the chance, you want to put them ideas together into something that you're actually going to like. Now I will say the angle of this one is too far out for me to get this nice shape. So this needs to go up. I'm going to erase that. 
And what I'll do is I'll get the corner of one of these little pieces of paper, which I like to cut into little squares. Dip a little bit of mineral spirits on there. And hopefully this will erase. See how that kind of dried up pretty quick? The angle is too far out for me to be able to still get this line the way I want it. I'm just going to try to make this to where the angle will sort of make sense. Something like that. Oh, I see what happened. I was thinking of it to go, but it should be fine still. It probably would have been okay. I think I just confused myself. So it probably was fine the way it was. Luckily, it wasn't that big of a difference. Now, if you end up with a bigger gap here and a smaller gap there, most people won't notice, but... You could always enclose it a little bit if you'd like. Now, let's see here. I'm going to meet this one. Kind of close up with it there. Do the same thing here. make use of this grid a little bit kind of follow those parallel lines and I'm gonna put a nice X here and I'm gonna give it a slight curve so a slight curve well actually that's a decent size curve but Kind of jumping all over the place, to be honest, but sometimes it's like that, folks. I noticed on one of my last videos, you could hear me breathing real heavy. But you got to kind of hold your breath sometimes with this stuff. You breathe when you get a chance, but don't forget to breathe. Because if you stop breathing, that's bad. I'm no doctor. But I believe you need to breathe. Now what I'm going to do is add another little element like that one out here. See, normally I would just, I was considering just going in or adding another kind of an X. But if you do this, it kind of gives you another little outside element. Kind of hangs off. Adds a little more meat to the 
initial design similar to these or those just little extras Now here I'm just kind of messing around considering because I want to elongate this but I want to see exactly how I want to do it. So I'm palleting my brush right now. I normally try to get the video here to where you can see that but this area has been taken up with previous projects. So I think what I'm going to do is add one more X. These are just good ways of breaking up your your center. Just adding these little X's. Just gives it makes it a little more interesting. And you could either go like that or straight. Now it seems as if both of mine are kind of rounding downward, but you can round them upwards. And I think in a previous video I mentioned things looking like faces sometimes. So I always I always think to myself when I do the downward, it reminds me of a cat's mouth. And when if you go to do upwards, it looks like a smiley face. So keep that in mind if you're not trying to make a facial looking thing. Uh, keep in mind your moves that you're making could end up a little bit face-like. When I first started, when I very, very first started, just lifting up after doing a line, just lifting up was horrible. I'd always like leave a blotch, but it really just comes with practice. I have no idea what happened where it just started. I was able to lift off the, pan the canvas without leaving that blotch. Just all of a sudden, one day I was able to do it. I think it's all muscle memory, you know? So I actually leaned over to this side too much, so I'm going to make that a little wider. I probably should have left it open, but sometimes I just can't leave well enough alone. Other things that you can do is add parts of the design that don't touch anything else. So if you want to just add a little teardrop here, give it to the middle. And I'm going to do it this one backwards because I don't want to stick my head in the camera. So very lightly and then push down. If you need to round off the tip, feel free to round that off.
you can always put these little kind of dash marks inside of these open areas. I hope they enclose the line a little. What do you think? Add another color? Why not? I'm going to squeegee out this orange. Look, I did that almost in 15 minutes. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'm starting to get the 15 minute thing in my head, huh? So I got rid of the orange for the most part. I'm just going to choose uh, a complementary color. Maybe some yellow. Which I have down here. These bottles. And this is why I like the bottles better than I like the uh, the cans. Because in order to change colors, it takes nothing. And we'll put it there so y'all can see it. Watch it get palleted. A chance we might pick up some of that old purple. Now, currently, this is very, very, very loosey. Loosey goosey, very wet. As you can see, I just blotted some there. So, uh, I probably should have squeegeed out some of the mineral spirits out of the brush. So, you can just wait and this will thicken up on its own, or you can uh, blow some air on it and it should help to dry up the reducer some. Something I do when I accidentally over reduce is just blow an air on it. It already feels a little bit thicker. Maybe spread it out some. If need be, you could always just lay down some more paint there. Because right now, if, if I go to use this paint right now, it's just going to slide all over the place. And you always want to shake your paint if it's in a if it's in a can. Put little rattlers in there, or um, make sure you stir it real good if it's in a if it's in a can. I think I said can earlier, but in a bottle. Either way, you want to shake or stir your paint, no matter what, because it separates if it sits a while. All right, so let's try to do what we can to add to this design and hopefully not take away you want to work off of the design elements that are already there at this point if I mess up I really can't erase what I've already done of course I say mess up and almost mess up There's a little bit of crud in the paint right here, but luckily this isn't like a real project. We got tape over here. Let's get rid of this tape. Maybe that'll let me come down like I did here. Now... The hard part is not sticking your finger in the wet paint, so I'm going to lift up my pinky finger. Kind of just... Hmm, not the best, but we'll continue.
But sometimes you can just come out of the middle of the line if you want. I mean, you can do whatever you want with this stuff, to be honest, but there comes a point to where uh, you do sort of have to follow some guidelines for it to still look like pinstriping. Because I could just sit there and make a bunch of straight lines or a bunch of crisscrosses, and it just, it'll just look like a bunch of lines. There is a slight formula to consider this still a pinstriping design. And... Um, at least in my opinion, and the way to figure that out is by looking at a lot of designs. Now, I'm going to squeegee out some of this paint with like a popsicle stick. Here, I have one that I've somewhat used. I'll make a little puddle. I'm going to put the back end of the brush in that little puddle. Hopefully it's not too runny. Put a few dots in choice places. Put one right there. Maybe one right there. One right here. So these dots kind of just add a little splash of color, a little more weight in certain spots. Uh, you can almost consider them like beads, beads on a necklace or something. Now, And they can be a way to um, add a little bit more um, balance in something if it feels a little unbalanced. Uh, you can always add a little balance with these dots. Kind of gives people kind of a fake focal points. 
Now you do want to you do want to be as symmetrical with this stuff as you can because at first glance it always look really good but if people really want to start analyzing it they're going to see the differences in in space and some folks say that's a good thing because it makes it more human and some folks will see that as you know the flaws if they're a paid customer or something they're going to see that as flaws they might ask you stuff like uh are you going to leave that like that uh <laughs> <laughs> so you always want to do your best to make sure it's it's nice now you can go overboard with these dots and again that's always opinionated but I figure what the hey this is just for fun anyways um, probably one of the best use of dots that I see with folks uh, with a particular pinstriper that I see is uh, Jason Clarkey I can't think of his full name but it's Clarkey uh, I was hoping to do a possible um, spotlight on his uh, on his work here soon. So I probably need to start on that. But uh, he has a very good utilization of dot work. Um, some of the best I've ever seen. So uh, that is the design. What, it took me 30 minutes? <laughs> so I'm not the fastest guy in the world with this stuff. Um... You know, this was a pre-thought up design, and uh, I did not expect to do two colors on it, but I figure what the heck, it was feeling good. The brush is working out for me, and I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Um, I'm going to do something here real fast. I remember my buddy Damon. Damon uh, shoots me some messages here and there. He's working on an awesome truck right now. It's his, it used to be his father's truck, I believe. He grew up in the truck, and he's working on it and refixing it up. But I remember he brought this up once. This is his favorite part. That's for you, Damon. Thanks for watching, brother. Thanks for paying attention to this stuff. <laughs> and thank you all so much. Have a great night.